Hey guys, it's James from James and Reptiles. Today I'm going to be talking about how I breed crested geckos and how I recommend you do it. And I'm also going to be feeding some, some. I'm going to be feeding my ball pythons and probably king snake too. So that'll be at the end if you want to see that. Let's get into it. All right. So first things first, you're going to want a big enclosure. This right here is an Exoterra. 18 by 18 by 36 something like that um, I would say this is big enough for a trio I wouldn't go more than that and it's got enough ventilation at the top it's got the glass that they can stick to and you can see I've added a bunch of foliage foliage is really important especially in breeding because you want the females to be able to get away from the male and get de-stressed um, if there's no foliage the male will constantly try to breed the female and Unfortunately, in a lot of animal kingdoms, it's kind of rape. So the male will latch onto the female, and if he can do it, the female kind of just lets him. That's kind of how that works. I'm going to open it up and show you what I got on the inside, and we'll go from there. All right, so right here you can see the tags I have on the tank. Skipper in blue, that's my male. 1801, he's the first gecko I got in the year of 18, C for crested gecko. Parent 1, male, parent 2, female. Lay date, hatch date, I have none of that information this gecko has given me. Same with these two, well I bought that one, I just don't have the information. Um, but this is my original trio. You see inside, I have the styrofoam background, it's not necessary by any means. I have a piece of tarp going over half the thing, just to keep a little bit more humidity in here. I have lots of fake plants, and I have a gecko, and I have this big log in the middle, and some fake vines, that's just random decoration. But you can see right here I have a Tupperware with a hole cut in it, that's the lay box, that's where your geckos are going to go in and lay their eggs. And when I first did was when I first put that in here with the geckos, they were laying in Eco Earth, it was given to me, it was about that thick at Eco Earth. I took it out, I, put, I left a little bit just in case something falls, one of them falls or something. And I replaced it with this this uh, egg box, and I kind of pu started putting the females in every once in a while, just so they could figure out what it was and like, oh, I can go in here and it's pretty humid. This would be a good place to dig. In that right, girly. In that right, boyo. All right, one more thing you're gonna need is geckos. You're gonna need a male and a female. Now, I would recommend a trio over a pair, even if one of them's not as nice of you to pick up a not as nice female just to throw her in there. It'll take half the breeding stress off with one female because half the time the male will be distracted. And I would probably recommend that size cage, maybe a little bit bigger. I wouldn't go smaller than that for a trio though. But it's really easy to tell male from female, especially if you're working with adults. It's the males have a huge bulge at the bottom, on, underneath at the base of the tail. The females are flat. The males have a huge bulge. If you're not sure, it's a female. If you don't think you see a bulge, the female. Um, so they, it's, it's room temperature. I don't keep any of my geckos on heat. It's room temperature. Um, it stays 78, 77, 78, 79 in my room. They lay in that egg box. I usually check once or twice a week and I'll catch them and I'll put them in my, my incubation medium. I have a video on that if you want to go back and watch it. But I incubate my eggs at room temperature too. So I have actually had eggs incubate in that enclosure and hatch out my first baby was like that because I wasn't checking for eggs. I wasn't expecting them to be breeding. I didn't know how easily they would just breed when I, someone gave them to me. I was like, oh, I'll do my research, I'll figure everything out, and then I'll change the temps or whatever I gotta do to get them to breed. They were just already breeding. They had eggs in there when he gave it to me. I don't know. But I also have a second enclosure, a slightly smaller enclosure set up just for the male. If anything happens, if the male prolapses, and it won't go back in, I separate them for at least a month. Um, if I see any weight loss in the females, I separate them for usually like three or four weeks. 
And if anything else happens, if any kind of injury happens to them, I usually separate them. And that just gives the females time to gain a lot of weight back up and get healthy again. It, the male doesn't have can focus on something else he can eat too. And if anyone's injured, it gives them time to heal. And so the females will lay their eggs that they have in them. They might stop for a little bit. You put the male back in. Maybe they won't lay the next month. And then after that, they start again. And that's how you take care of any issues. There's not really a lot of issues in crested geckos. I don't ever find mites. None of them are ever injured. Um, I've never had one drop a tail. There, Those three that I have in there don't have tails, but I've never personally had one drop a tail. Um, I've heard Neosporin works great. Rub a little Neosporin on there. And that's, I mean, if you don't have Egorth in the enclosure, you're probably fine. And I wouldn't feed crickets if they just dropped their tail because they could possibly get in there and you just want to keep it real clean if they do do something like that because you don't want, I've seen maggots in tails and that's no fun. But I th think that's it for Crested Gecko breeding. If anyone has any questions, I've been doing it for like six months, which isn't a long time, but I'm doing it a lot. I work with people who also do it and I understand the concepts of breeding because I breed other animals. So if you have any questions about any part, don't, if it's super specific, if it's super random, if you don't think I'll understand, just ask it because it's better to get your questions answered than to leave yourself not knowing. I'm going to go finish thawing out these rats and I'll catch you at the ball pythons, which are behind me. All right, guys, so I got both my ball pythons out. That one's Steve and that one's TJ. TJ stands for Trent Jr. Um, Trent Jr. is a girl. Um, Trent Jr. is probably going to take two baby rats and Steve's probably going to take two mice just because that's what I have and we'll see. Oh, there it is. Come on, buddy. Yep. That's the wrap. Steve tends to be, Steve, TJ tends to be pretty piggy, but he did, she did just shed a couple days ago. See, there's a, well, you can't see, but there, I can see there's a little piece underneath her. So, she looks like she might take this. We'll see. No, I don't think so. Oh, oh. Oh, shit. She did hit the tongs a little bit. I've never actually had that happen, so... When she's done eating, I will make sure I check her mouth. And I'm just, just checking to make sure she didn't hurt her jaw or nothing. Because they are metal tongs. So we'll see. Update, neither of my ball pythons ate this week. A little surprised, a little not. This is the first time they've gone off feed in, well it's the first time Steve's gone off feed since I've had him. TJ went off feed for like seven months when I first got him. And it hasn't, it's been, he's been eating fine for probably six months. I don't really blame him because they were hairless rats. I have a little group, a trio of hairless rats. And I just had some extra. You know, you can't always sell all of them. So instead of selling it for $10, I saved myself a trip to the pet store. And I, they both struck, they both coiled, and they both let go and looked at me like, what is this? Now they both had hairless rats before. I haven't really noticed a difference in their poop when they do, because they do have a little bit of fuzz. But nonetheless, I'm gonna flip you around I'm going to feed my California king snake, my oldest one that I have right now. My oldest oldest is on a breeding loan. And it's going to be a live feeding, so if you don't want to see that, end the video now and I will catch you next time. But if you do want to see that, stay tuned. Alright, so in this tub I have seven mice. Four are going to replace four of my breeder mice out of the eight that I have. 
and three I'm growing up specifically for this snake. So these three little ones right here. Let's see if he's hungry. What's up, buddy? Maybe I should get my tongs. Maybe not. There we go. Now I've actually never sat and watched this snake eat. He's pretty shy. I'm pretty sure it was wild caught when I got it. But nevertheless, I care about this snake and I understand the laws of wild caught animals in my state. And this snake is going to stay with me forever. And at this point it would be more harm to release it into the wild. So I'm probably going to pause this, put it on a hyperlapse, and we'll see how it goes. Well, I was going to do a hyperlapse, and then someone called me. And then it just started going ham. So I figured if it was a hyperlapse, it'd take like five minutes to see five seconds. And I don't know how to do just a regular time lapse, but I think it's less. So I turned the hyperlapse off, and you're just going to watch him eat. Because that's, <laughs> that's what we're doing right now. I think I'll probably try to feed another one after this. I'm trying to push this snake a little bit. Just because I have so many adult frozen mice that are going to go bad soon. And my other snake that actually eats frozen mice is the one that's on breeding loan. So I'm trying to save some of that for him. That way it doesn't just go to waste. All those mice I don't want to go to waste. Actually, I can go back and split this clip up and speed it up. So I'll probably go back and do that and then I'll just slow it down every time I talk in it. It'll take a little bit longer, but it's whatever. I need to get used to editing. Especially if I'm going to make a video every day for the rest of my life. You can see he's still wagging his tail, even though it's just the tail of the mouse is sticking out. He's still alert that I'm right here, and he understands that his instincts tell him that there's a danger right here. But I think I'm going to give him just a second to move it a little bit further down his body, less likely for a regurge, and then I'm going to introduce another mouse. There's the second mouse. Oh shoot. I think if it spooks him like that, he usually doesn't want to eat it. So I'll probably end up taking it out. Sure, buddy? This mouse. Okay. No mouse, no second mouse. What's up, guys? It's me the next day. I passed out last night, super tired, didn't upload, didn't upload twice today, so. I'm doing a video every day, and hopefully, some people learn from this and someone takes something home and understands it. But you'll see me after I eat my food that's in the oven, and, uh, 
Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Gmail. Okay, bye.